what, with PVL, Rugby League. And this Rugby League, I thought Rugby League. I reckon Rugby League will be on ESPN. No one goes to right, Rugby League. Rugby League. Rugby League. With Mr. Rugby League running it up there. But I think Rugby League, but with Rugby League running it, Rugby League will keep going. G'day punters, welcome to a deep dive from uh, looking at the All-Star Mile, Peter, from down here on the peninsula as uh, we self-isolate to an extent. We had to hose down Pistol when he arrived at the at the, at the, the address. Um, we were not allowed to go into Betfair today, rightly so. Um, we're just Australians being Australians, and if we keep being Australians, then everything will be sweet. What leadership that is. I mean, to tell people who are jumping over each other to pinch toilet paper and stock up on poo tickets to just keep <laughs> doing you and everything would be sweet. So what you're saying is that you should really be Prime Minister because you do you and... No, 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 no. I wouldn't want that job, but um, I am... When he speaks, I'll become more scared of what is ahead. Read Corona. Karuna. We had a very unique yeah, like experience there on the weekend with the, we weren't allowed on track and as yard people, yeah. it's very different. How'd you find it? I, I don't want to be seen to bag racing.com. Um, I thought that, I, I love Hutchie and Richo and they did a great job like covering it and Ascari was very good on Friday night. Yep. Um, the amount of yard coverage is, is poor and frustrating. Everything else is really good. Yeah. Um, the, the one critique I have is the the yard coverage, which I obviously don't ever watch, but I'm forced to now. Um, so it made, there were some races where you could glimpse a fair bit of what we'd try and find from on course, from the TV. Um, there were a bunch though where you couldn't and it made no sense, to, like the, the randomness of it. We had a, it's a very small like data pool, yeah. Yep. But we had two really big winning days. Yeah, like, as yeah. good as we've sort of ever had. So we're, I'm comfortable and confident moving forward with the new way of doing it for however long it is. But I know in myself that if we were losing and they weren't showing the horses uh, and they're doing it, rent, there wasn't a uh, consistency to it. Yep, it'd do my head in, and it still did my head in. Uh, for those who, but moving forward, we might be sending you on course, and I yeah. might stay in the cave because yeah. it. It worked. Big there, time. There's certainly positives there for having one person off course, just with so much going on. For those being able to sit, being able to sit there, I guess, Pete, and and take in all the information yeah. comfortably and calmly, and review the race as thoroughly as I went. Yeah, like more thoroughly than you can on course. Access to your replays. Yeah, straight so I away. Just, I was just rewinding it. Yep. Um, music pumping. Yep. Happy good. place. Um, if anyone from dot com is watching. Ideally, what we'd want is to see every horse parade without a jockey on board, without running to the barriers. Mm. Even ideally, if it meant that you had a fixed camera, get Nick Noonan, our man, on course, just get him to point his camera just in one position so you can see all the horses walk past that one spot. That yeah, would and be fine. I, and we know there's people there who see it the same, and yep. like Nick Noonan would understand what we want to look at. Yep. And we know we're probably only a very small percentage of your audience. Um, Everything else is great. I don't want to sound like we're blowing well, up completely. The biggest betting syndicate, if it's good enough for them to have someone on course or at all the major courses around Australia, you'd think they'd probably try and cater towards it to a certain extent. Yeah, it would. Um, the day, though... Uh, I thought it was a C-grade yeah. card. Um, looked after by some good races towards the end, and yep. there were some big figures run. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about the excess funds race, which has gone enormous. Yes. Like, utterly enormous. So, I'm not... A, I suppose you've just got to trust it, but it, it seems like a big figure to me. Yeah. Um, the All-Star Mile's gone huge, courtesy of uh, Flit and <laughs> D-Lane and uh, Godolphin. And they've run a really nice figure in the last there. Yeah. Well, let's start with excess funds and the, the dash there of 1,100. In terms of the class, they've gone 7 point two lengths fast to the 600 pretty quick and look if we go off the overall adjusted figures excess funds has returned with the biggest figure for the day in the puntingform.com.au data and what does it improve its previous 
performance by Peter? It's previous best performance, so it's recorded a 15.7 above. Its previous best was 8.0, so it's improved on its best performance by 7.7 .7 lengths. And I think, yeah, it does look a bit hot goish, but three wide, four wide, no cover. Out of the shoot. Out of the shoot on Saturday at Caulfield was the A ground. Yep. That's where Godotton was, that's where Excess Funds was. I think it gives more merit to River Knight's performance yep. in the two yard race, so that was a tiny field. But I don't think it was like completely like sort of just a hot, hot go. It was a pretty hot go, but it wasn't. It wasn't unbelievable where it won from. The, the, in run, I wasn't thinking like, yeah. oh, you're in the wrong spot here. Yeah, yeah. Like, and we, we backed, or half almost backed it, but didn't trust you to be forward enough. Yeah. Um, it didn't really matter. But we backed it on it, and I knew it would be three yeah. or four wide. Yep. Um, excess funds, solid support over the last half hour. It's gone from $7.20 as an opening price, hit a high of seven sixty closed around that 540 mark so good sustained money for it and especially over the last five to ten minutes it really was just the only one uh, that the the fair wanted um, there was some money and some support for sartorial splendor uh, but that did drift out a little bit late um, so look there, there was that that money to back up that excess funds performance um, way up in the sky was supported and was pretty solid throughout betting it didn't really drift or firm though it was just money being traded backwards and forwards well, i thought out of the excess funds race it's a, it's a horse that's always had ability and it was given yeah. a complete barrier trial when it was barely mentioned in the stewards port at um the fictional my, some of my favorite reading i love to do it once or twice a week uh, puts me right to sleep off the barrier trial at mooney valley it made yeah. a lot of sense it, it was going to go big here to yep. me uh, not quite that big. I thought Exeter, out of that race, was in the worst going and yep. was a big performance and is a horse you can follow at home. Exeter, out of race six. Okay, well, we'll jump straight into the, the ASM. Um, for the class, very fast, 9.9 .9 lengths fast. It's at a 600, courtesy of Flit, um, who, I guess, led at a speed that was far and above anything that it's recorded previously. By far and above, Peter, let's we, we have the the wealth of knowledge at this punningform.com.au, mate. Yeah. What do you mean by that? What does it exactly do? What did it exactly do, my man? Uh, so if we go to the the all benchmark figures for Flit, it's gone 15.1 lengths faster than any other race that's been in previously to the 600 um, and it led this time so last start and the start before it's gone the same speed to the 600 when settling third and fourth on relatively slow to even tempos and then suddenly it's pinged the lids been ridden handlebars down like a motorcycle by d lane and surely then we'd given that uh ma Ustus was told off by the stewards for a change of tactics on bonds of bonds away in the oakley plate when it was mad on pace and you couldn't make ground yep let's have a little read here <laughs> flit over raced in the early and middle stages weakened from the 200 meters rider damian lane reported his intention was to settle into a forward position i didn't see that on twitter i didn't see a change of tactics there was no official Whatever. change of tactics doesn't matter does it just they got away with it. But it's okay because James Cummings came out in RSN that morning and suggested they would be more positive with the horse. Like I love Gareth, but you yeah. can't expect... It's well, not we're an official... To listen, yeah. We're forced to listen to RSN, are we, yeah. to get tactics changes? Yeah. It's complete nonsense. If it's good enough to say in public, then notify the stewards. Who's running this? Scott Morrison? Game out. Scotty from marketing. Wishy washy sort of stuff this. Yep. Wow. Um, but with no intention to lead after having traveled wide when going forward in the early stages, the filly initially settled comfortably in front. So it settled comfortably in front. Going 15 lengths Never faster. led in its life. <laughs> after passing the thousand meters, so 600 meters into the race, and over raced and would not settle, a post-race examination revealed a slow recovery, which would make a good amount of sense given the horse went 15 lengths above it's previous PB to the 600. Yep. And it's just a suicidal pace to the 600. Yes. 
Yes. I, I, I've got no... I love the ride. Loved it. Thought about backing it mid-race. But when you question sometimes and you don't question the other, it just makes it a complete farce. Yep. It's an absolute joke. Complete no joke. Deeper into the All-Star Mile, Pete. I think you were... Very, very, very stiff. What? Superstorm should have won. It was enormous. Um, Absolutely enormous. It was an enormous performance. I think that horse is a superstar. It is. Um, I was watching the, the race with Britt and Gareth, the old Sky team back together from Perth, and they were cheering for Regal Power because we just wanted to see one of the WA horses win. And they were cheering for Regal Power, and I was jumping up and down just watching Superstorm just loom into the race down the outside, knowing I was heavily leveraged on it. Did you, did you read the Shields report? I don't know why I keep pushing myself through it, but I keep doing it. <laughs> Rider Mark Zara accidentally dropped his left rein passing the 300 metres. Oh, did you know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh. Oh. What, about, what about William Pike? All of a sudden he can ride again because he's ridden one winner. I mean, look, he was, he, he was a bit stiff on Superstorm in the oh, no. race. But Heaps of non-betting analysts said it was an awful ride. He was blocked in oh. by a catalyst that was legless. Oh, please. It went for a spell afterwards. It was, I thought his ride at Flemington was sweet. Oh, and his, power as well, yeah. I thought his rod here was outstanding. Yeah. And it sickened me so deeply that little William put this horse in the race. After, I think it was in the previous race, he snicked uh, Star Days, who's yep. an on-pace horse. He snicked it to near the last. Yep, but I noted, because I'm de doing deep reviews as we roll along, because I've got so much time and I'm comfortable <laughs> in my little cave. This but bloke's never to be backed again in Melbourne. Can't ride doesn't ever put horses into races. Dicko, it's a grand Next race. Grand final, late support for Eagle Power. We've been seeing this oh, for mate, years Oh, mate, Star Days isn't first. Winx. That was its grand no, final. No. But oh, it was an outstanding ride from gate gate three to keep the horse off the fence as well, which was pretty oh, much cast oh, the entire day. I think the race kind of... I don't want to sound like a dickhead here, but I was half right, like... Mm. Yeah, so I thought it or Mr. Quickie would, would ping and get that spot. Yep. And then like it or Melody Bell would look like the winner. Yep. I think he 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 ruined Melody Bell, who probably should have won. Yeah. Superstorm could have won. And whoever got that spot of the dynamic horses, like if Fierce Impact had yeah. drawn barrier six and got that spot, it would have won. Yep. But Pike utilised the good gate, put the horse in the perfect spot. It was winning at the 600. Yeah, it was bolting, wasn't it? I thought Mr. Quickie you can follow. It just was given none, not by Damien, just by the horse just doesn't ping. Yeah. And you could see, and there's a great, like, Racing.com's coverage was outstanding of the race from the helicopter shot. Yeah, yeah, it's great, isn't you it? You could just yeah. see that he just, he had to dig the horse up. Yep. Which he can't do. Or he just sort of got pushed out the back of the surf. But, but Regal Power was able to use, utilise the gate, be right in that spot, dynamic late. What are we doing with Dallasan? Oh, fucking I, here, here you, it can't, is you can't sack it. Yeah, it's it's been sort of in these races where it's been, I guess, snicked back to last. and It was, really it was almost and, as good as Superstorm. Yeah, and now here it is. I, just, I think uh, Dallasan will be a bettable proposition moving forward because you're just yeah. going to get enormous prices now. Yep. You? Yeah. I, well, I want to see it, I want to see it in a good race over 1,200 metres down the Flemington Straight. That's what I yeah. want to see. Yeah, yeah. It, there's something there, you have to respect it. Alligator blood's obviously going Trouble is, though, I'm convinced the horse has good tactical speed. Yeah, and, and it just hasn't been used. They snicked it here in a savage align, though, so what are the connections going to do next up? Snick and savage. Yeah. Snick and savage. I don't know, unless they're just waiting for gate two or something like that, who knows? Um, Blackheart Bart. Bart was. Uh, oh, was that the. Yeah. I love Brad. Yep. Well, I don't love Brad, but I'm not bagging Brad as a rider, but this was one of yeah. the worst rides on the day. How yeah. did. He was drawn. Uh, outside, Gate six. and some hours end up three wide, no cover. Yeah. Like what? What was that? Well, Barty's going home to contest the the winter wait for age races in WA, and you suspect it might be uh, retirement after that. But just give me. Oh, we we backed on. it. We had yeah, yeah. small at the big odds. Yeah. Like yeah. It, with a better ride, it gets the good spot. Yeah. It was strong to the line. He's he's going well, but this thing's cooking man. up here, Peter. Let's keep Getting going. a bit warm. Oh. Fucking warm. I don't know why we did this here, but we did. Yeah, got the sunscreen on. It's good. Um, Colding, what are we doing with that horse? Just, 
Not not one of mine. Not this prep. Goes back to Sydney. Hopefully it starts really short in the market and we can comfortably just avoid it. Bit around it. But if it gets to a big price, I suppose it'll start to go up. Yeah. And who knows? We might be uh, focusing a lot heavily on a lot more heavily on the races in Sydney, like with PVL, Rugby League. Rugby League. Rugby League. With Mr. Rugby League running up there. They still had they, they had fans. They allowed fans <laughs> into the stadium and this rugby league. Rugby league. No one goes to our rugby league. So there wasn't even like you weren't losing much cash if you just didn't let the fans go. But they let the fans in and they were washing the footballs. Yeah. Players aren't players aren't like they're not shaking hands, but they're groping each other and tackling each other's sweaty messes. What a joke. It was bizarre. But with Rugby League running it, I think he's gonna see a big opportunity. I reckon Rugby League will be on ESPN in America. Still that they'll go and send them which they should do to jockeys. Yeah. Every every sport that wants to keep racing needs to isolate their their key stars, the people they need. Yep. But I think rugby league will keep <laughs> rugby league will keep going, and I, if they stop racing in Victoria, it'll be at least two more weeks of racing oh, in New South Wales. It's a dollar one that New South Wales yeah, lasts longer. Turnover is king up there. Exactly. Um, shall we have a look at the Vars race? And, and, they, and they'll keep and they'll sell all the ponies, <laughs> and then some big trainer will get get the Corona at the at the English sales. <laughs> Oh, it's Cash a, is king, baby. It's hilarious, isn't it? Um, race eight, the Vars sixteen hundred um, listed race, four point six lengths slow to the six hundred. For the class, Guizo, your old mate. Oh, this race just makes me sick, sick. Yeah. Fuck Guizo, complete non-winner. I've been, we've been with it relentlessly. Oh, yeah. And here it is. Willow had to make a move. I, I, the rod didn't look great. But, but if the horse is yeah. any good, it just lets down and wins. Yep. Oh, I thought the ride was fine from where it was. The horse is always going to be back last in run. Um, Guizo got the toe. Great ride, Guizo. Was that Linda again? Yeah, Linda. Great ride, Linda. Well done. I thought um, Scarlet Dream. Yeah. That's what we we're going to talk about. Yeah. Scarlet Dream. Let's get to that in the stewards report. Because yet again, our man, M, well not, not our man, but I just feel like Empoy gets bullied. Yeah, we're going into bat here for, for Empoy. Stewards report, Empoy. It's a, it's a paragraph here, a whole paragraph with the stewards telling him how he should have ridden the horse. I'm not gonna read it all out. Go to racing.com, get up the meeting, you'll find the stewards report. They have baked his ride. You go and then go and watch the replay. I don't know what else he could have done other than be eight wide I thought the yeah. ride was fine. The horse savaged the line. It'll be winning races this preparation. How has he copped this spray? And then I went back and it reminded me of the spray he copped for Odeon. Odeon, yeah. When Odeon, Peter, did a bit of research. Odeon went 11.7 above the all average to the 600. Yep. Previous starter went 2.3. That is a big jump. However, four other times in its career, it had gone faster to the 600. And on that day, there and he was, copped a massive yeah. spray about not being able to count to ten and going too fast on the horse. Yep. From the stewards who don't have punting formula come to you yet, you should and you need to get it. Yep. Flit. We read it out. Yeah. There was nothing. Yep. Flit's previous fastest in his career, his whole career, one point two to the six hundred. It went sixteen point three. <laughs> sixteen point three. Empoy copped it. Copped it for riding Odeon, who's a decent horse. Mm. 11.7 fast. Flit went 16.3. 15.1 increase. Yep. Nothing. Empoy is copping a barrage. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what he's, he's done, done something to someone. Is it because he's an apprentice? I don't know. I don't know. But it scares the shit out of me that the way they treat him. It, like, did, it did seem don't strange. Treat others. It like, did like, seem some strange. can do whatever they want. I, I thought that. I couldn't believe it. I went back and watched it again because mm. I'd, I'd reviewed the race and I thought, oh, that was a pretty good run from where he was. He was back and buried the fence. Yeah. He's never going to get every possible from there. Yep. It's, it happens in every single race, every every race, every day in Australia and the world. If you're four back the fence, you're not going to get every bit of luck as you corner. Yep. Fuck me. But he took the shortcut. Almost rewarded. Yeah. Um, anything else to come out of this race? Not really. I mean, Guizo was back right. late. There was money coming from it. Bunch of late. numbers. Yep. Admiral's Joker can get now. Um, 
The Scarlet Dream's one to follow. Yep. All right. Last race, race nine, 1200, benchmark 80. Uh, well done to yourself here, identifying Gidodden. Um They've gone 4.4 .4 lengths fast to the 600. Weekend for us, eh? Yeah, it was, it was a great weekend. Um, as, as we've said a few times, if they're racing, we'll be betting. We have to. I've got to feed the kids. Yeah. I've got to pay the mortgage. Oh, I've been focusing on Hong Kong and Singapore. We, we bet a fair bit yeah. up in uh, Queensland on the yeah. weekend. Um, we've got some news, actually, punters. Big new signing, a bit of new sort of... Something new for the mailbag. We're going to have a big signing. Who's yep. going to be providing good, good betting advice? It's been that strong for me so far. Yeah, been tested for about two or three months. I'm ready to release him. Yep, that'll be happening this week. We think. Beauty. Which will, unless they can the racing in Queensland. Who knows? Who knows what's happening, Peter, in these troubled times? I, I thought race nine was uh, pretty much what you saw, what you got. Nothing to learn. Nothing to follow. Majorly. Apart from the race will be a pretty strong form race, so it went good. Yep. Um, went good time. I thought the horses there to the meeting that interested me to follow in summing up, Peter, we're wrapping up here. Yeah? Yep. Race four, Stars at Caram. Race five, Excused and Exeter. Uh, race seven, Superstorm. We'll, might talk about it on Pathways. We might have to wait till Peter does a bit more research with his connections. He's, he's Western Australian, West is best connections and find out where it's going and we're going to have a little long a real long term a little a real big one like a big because <laughs> it's a proper beast this thing i love it and scarlet dream they're the horses i think are worth following out of the meeting anything no <laughs> yes well. all right that's the deep dive hope you enjoyed it feedback always welcome probably heaps more content coming up because we can't get there in bed